Hi, I'm Doug Reeves with frequently asked questions from San Bernardino teachers about effective grading practices. What are these strategies that have the highest impact on student learning? Well, let me offer three for you to consider. Number one, get rid of the average. The average makes no sense in evaluating student achievement. We're a standards-based district in a standards-based state. That means we evaluate students based on what they know and are able to do when we give the grade not the average of what they know and are able to do, and all the mistakes they made at the begin beginning of the semester. The average simply doesn't make sense and you ought to throw it out. I know sometimes computers default to that, but you, the classroom teacher, have got the authority to make the final grading decision. And I would argue everybody watching this tape is smarter than any computer that's ever been invented. Don't default to the average. Evaluate students where they are right then. The other reason to get rid of the average is that if you do that, you avoid having students simply give up toward the end of the semester because they say, gee, I've dug a hole so deep I can't get out of it, I might as well quit. When you get rid of the average, you are teaching resilience. You're teaching real world work ethic. That's the sort of thing that students need in college and the world of work. So get rid of the average. Number two, get rid of the zero on the 100 point scale. Now, I would argue, I know there are times when kids don't do work and you feel, well, I've got to give them a zero. And I'm okay with that if and only if it's a mathematically accurate zero. So if we go back to the old fashioned way of A is a four, B is a three, C is a two, D is a one, F is a zero, I'm good because there's one point equal interval between A, B, C, D, and F. But if we stay in the 100 point system, the zero is a mathematical distortion. Think of it this way, A is a 90, B is an 80, C is a 70, D is a 60. 10 points in between the A, B, C, and D. But if they don't turn work in, then it drops all the way down to zero, a 60 point difference. That magnifies the probability that students will simply give up because a zero on a 100 point scale is the academic death penalty. And I want to suggest it's not accurate. So either give them 10 points lower than your D, 50, or just go back to the old four point scale, 43210 for A, B, C, D, F. So get rid of the average, get rid of the zero on the 100 point scale, and then make sure that we're grading actual performance, not practice. You know, our athletic teams get graded based upon the actual performance in the game, not how good or bad they did in practice before the game. The two may be related, just as practice in class and practice at homework may be related to the end of, uh, end of course performance, but it's not perfect. Evaluate them on how well they did in actually playing the game, that is, demonstrating proficiency in the standards to which you hold them accountable. You can have, when this doesn't work, a lot of students doing homework perfectly and then failing the final test, but because they did that and maybe some extra credit, they wind up passing the class for a, a subject that they don't really know the standards, or conversely, we have students who can ace a final exam or ace an advanced placement or IB exam, and nevertheless, they get a D in the class because they didn't do homework. The dis there may be a point of doing practice, but if the practice is not related to the final performance, then we certainly should not be grading that practice. Do those three things. Get rid of the average, get rid of the zero in the 100 point scale, and stop grading practice rather than performance. You'll take giant steps toward more effective grading practices.